with my life is a miracle. Every child has a story of, of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story. Do you ever wish you could love your wife better? Do you ever wonder what do women really think about sex? Could some of the key relationships in your life be improved? Well, if you answered yes to any of these questions, then you are not going to want to miss this episode of Real Men. You know, being mad male and female is an interesting and challenging experience. I recently took my phone and I put it on black and white to give myself a little bit of a detox. And after a month, when I switched it back on the color, I could not believe my eyes. I literally thought that there must have been a system update that made the colors more vivid, more bright. And it got me reflecting. Our world would be a boring place if it was just men. It'd be like walking around in sepia tones. God created men and women made in God's image. And it makes for a really colorful, interesting, and challenging experience. The concept of the love tank is a useful reminder for any relationship or marriage. In Dr. Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, he speaks of how we all have a love tank and that this love tank is filled up through regular emotional deposits. This emotional deposits can be things like physical intimacy, the exchanging of gifts, or quality time. Naturally, we all experience things that drain our emotional love tank. For some people, this can be a slow emptying. For others, this can be a complete drought. The kind of things that empty our love tank are things like emotional disconnection, criticism, stress, even just day-to-day -day life can really empty us of feeling full and loved. One thing is for certain, if we want to experience a healthy, holy, happy relationship, it's best to keep our love tank full, perhaps even overflowing. I think uh, women want, well, I want, men to be strong, I want them to be trustworthy, I want them to be kind and compassionate and understanding, I want them to be able to do their best at whatever they put their hand to. Well, what I love about my husband and my sexual relationship is I love the closeness and the feelings of comfort that come with that, that's what you share with one other person. But I do also want him to be respectful towards me. I want him to overlook my flaws, of course, as I get older. And I want him to continue to delight in me and, and to be his one and only, the, you know, the apple of his eye type thinking. So, but yeah, it's also helpful for him to understand when I may not feel amorous. And, and that's, that when he does that, when he controls himself for me, that makes me feel really loved and respected. Withholding from sex is uh, a form of abuse. There's the, the physical touch is so important. And I think in, in a marriage, in a relationship, uh, withholding or not providing this to your partner is, 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 can, can over time have, a, have an impact on the emotional well-being of the person. And physical well-being, I mean, uh, hugging and touching releases um, good hormones and this is uh, called the happy hormones. And this is so important in a relationship. It makes you feel alive. For example, my mother was very, very warm and cuddly. And um, I felt alive, I felt love. And this is paramount. This is so important in a relationship. Women love to be loved. I mean, it's as simple as that. And I think men do too, but women in a specific way they, they want that, I guess it's back to the fairy tale thing, it's like, he chooses me. 
He chooses to spend time with me. I think most women, they want men, even in a sexual way, to be more considerate. They want them to go slower. They want them, don't, they don't want just, you know, the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, if you like, um, of, of sexuality. They want, they want to be wooed. And, but they have to play their part in that as well. They have to understand what a man wants as well. It's such a mutual thing. And I can't answer that question without going back to that mutuality. You can't expect that from a man if you're not going to go halfway with that and know what a man wants and what he needs. Your man, not other men. It comes down to that. You can't generalise about that. You have to come down to that individual um, perspective on your man. What does he need? So, gents, easy topic with this one. It is understanding women. So, if you can just package this neatly in a 30-second answer to solve all my future problems, that'd be great. Uh, I'm not sure what I'd say I find the hardest, but I think one thing that's really helped me, especially in relationships with women, is just growing in my understanding that when it comes to these topics of um, sex, sexuality and relationships, uh, there is a very high chance that the women in my life are not thinking about me or my body or this topic of sex in the same way that I might find myself thinking about them sure. or their body in this topic of sex. And yeah, the more I grow in uh, my understanding of this, um, the, the more life may Makes sense, and the more my relationships um, find uh, find a healthy sort of uh, balance and, and, and meeting place in that level of, of, of intimate relationship. Yeah. What about you, Vin? I find I I don't understand every woman, but I understand my wife. Um, that uh, she, her, her most important thing is security. She wants to feel secure in her you know, in who she is and the husband that she has. And um, so we, we talk a lot, we share, and I, I find that I understand that, you know, if I, if I love the kids as much as she does, she loves me. It's, you know, it goes around that she's, it makes her feel good. Uh, for me, the hardest part that I've come to understand, I'm still trying to understand, even though it sounds so easy, is that it's not about the problem or the issue that she might be sharing or talking about, she just really loves being heard and loves talking about it. And that's healing in itself. Whereas I want to fix it, I want to solve it, I want to be the man that can save her. Um, but that's been something that's really challenging. And again, I can say that and get it, but in the moment, it will not look like that. <laughs> and I'll always jump straight to, I can see the solution here. But it, it's, you know, she really wants to be seen and be heard. And uh, for me especially, um, that's really valuable to her, so. I agree. Well, with my wife, I've found that it's, um, over, over time I've learned that it's, it's more the, the connection and being present with her. So, you know, as, as, as guys, you're going, well, you know, it's half an hour before bedtime, so hopefully this is intimacy time, this is sex time. <laughs> okay. In time for them, it starts way back you know, during the day, have I texted her? Says, "Here, how are you doing?" I got home. What was my mood when I got home? Yeah. I was, I was present. I helped with the dishes. I helped with the kids. I helped be present in our lives, mm. and that for her is is warming and and showing that I'm nurturing mm. and, and there for her, and and that in turn leads to intimacy later. Yeah. It, it's all about the the emotional build up in your life in a relationship. Yep. Yeah, it's amazing how we think so differently. I'm about to go on a holiday with my wife without the kids. And my wife said to me, uh, Paul, I just can't wait to be alone with you yeah. so that we can talk heaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, that is not what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I struggle understanding women. I think that's one of my <laughs> one of my big problems. Really? Good yeah. We, we don't problem. Yeah, yeah, you're the only one. <laughs> What's wrong, Paul? Uh, and, and like and I mean like going back to growing up, I I didn't get women growing up and I was completely awkward with them. And um I grew up with four sisters, but man, I just don't get good women. I just I I still don't get it. I still make the same mistake. Yeah, I, I, I think it really, I really struggle with, um, <laughs> yeah, understanding women. But then obviously in my relationship with my wife is I just do the wrong things at the wrong time and, um, and I get the wrong outcome <laughs> that I want. Um, 
they value, I guess, emotion more than the physical and connection more than the physical. And I just don't get that. <laughs> I just, it, I'm just like, and I just don't get that, like, we're going to bed and then that's it. It's game on. I, <laughs> that's intimacy for me. Like, I still don't get that. I still don't know how that can be different. Um, um, and I, and I know that it's almost like I get it in theory. So I do what, like I, I, you try. Yeah, I try. I go, okay, I got to do this, but I don't get it. You know what I mean? It's like, I know that that's what I have to do. Like you were saying, but I, I still go, why am I, like, I still don't get why I have. Uh, why does this work? Yeah. yeah. It, it takes time, eh? I mean, I've been married 23 years and it's, it's taken me all of, I reckon, 23 years yeah. to start figuring this out. I find myself today dealing with many women in, in profoundly shame-filled aspects, and particularly women who are struggling with pornography. And the resounding question that I'm hearing from them is, deep, deep down, they're wanting to know, am I still beautiful? Mm. Am I still, am I still, have I still got value? Yes. And so what happens is, it goes back to that thing of listening, of honoring and being present, mm. and giving attention necessary affection, healthy affection, but above all, it's better to say, truly you are beautiful as God has made you beautiful. Yeah. And every man has a role in affirming the beauty of every woman. Every woman. Every woman. Our children, our wives, the women we encounter on a day-to-day -day existence. Everywhere, from the, from, from, from the checkout to, to, the, to the accountant, to the CEO that's a woman, every one of them, mm. need, they need us to be present to them. They need us to be able to see into them but particularly those closest to us. A common difference between the sexes is often that men have sex to feel good about themselves and that women need to feel good about themselves in order to have sex. I think as a man, I often need to remind myself that I need to focus on intimacy and that sex is not necessarily equal to intimacy. I can only speak from what my woman wants and I'll put it in two parts. The first part is she really wants intimacy from me. And what I've discovered that means for her is in to me see, mm. that I see in her yeah. who she is and what she needs, what she wants. And that, that has to be very practical. It can't just be a feeling. So the practicality of it is if I want intimacy in my definition of intimacy, um, I need to begin intimacy long before I want to uh, exercise that in the bedroom. So I have to begin in the morning in the kitchen, yep. you know. And, and if you are, sex if, starts in the kitchen. Though, sex so. starts in the kitchen. And, and, if, and if, if, you are, if she was here today you, and asked her, she would say, when Robert puts away the toaster, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I feel loved. I feel loved. I feel intimacy. A performative utterance is a statement that does what it says, such as the mayor saying, I declare this building open. The building is now open. Now sex has a performative quality as well. When we make love, it actually makes love. It brings something new into existence, sometimes in the form of a little baby. I don't know about you men, but I need constant reminding that things other than sex actually foster love. You know, I'll take a risk. And, um, and one of the things I've seen uh, w working with men and women that have been injured is that largely I've, I've, I've heard women say, what hurt me the most was the dishonesty, not, not, the, the, not, not the actual sin, that if they've just been honest mm. and, and let me in. And I know that I'm talking about the sharp end of the stick there, but I think, you know, w w women want us to be honest and, and to be in our integrity. And from there we can work together yep. towards wholeness. But without the honesty, uh, then we're not working with the full story. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I guess after 43 years of marriage, I'm going to take a shot at it then. So mm. what my wife wants from me is to receive her. Mm. Yeah no matter what she's going through, no matter what the situation, to receive where she is, which mm. means that I am available, mm. that I make time, uh, that I'm attentive. Yeah. Wow. Mm. wow, beautiful. Mm. It has been said that the dignity of all women 
is the responsibility of every man. I think this is true. I think it should also be said that the pleasure and happiness of every wife is the responsibility of every husband. Now, as men, we can be understanding and caring men for our wives by making sure that we foster an environment at home that is not based on superficiality of appearance. But also, we can make sure that the women we love know how beautiful they are and how desirable they are to us. Okay, I really value that Vin is very committed and does his very best to be a good husband to me, as good as he can be. I see that continual effort on his part. If he's loving our children, it makes me feel loved. That, and that, again, gives me strength to, to do the things that are in my heart to do. So I think knowing that there is someone strong behind me or next to me, cheering me on is really important to me. I uh, want to be accepted and loved for who I am and uh, to be listened to. I think we, we want to be heard. There's, we want men to listen to us, not to dismiss us. I mean, all that comes into my head is to be loved. And I, and I know it, it does sound pithy and we all want to be loved, but she wants to be cherished and loved by her man and she's it. She's the one and the only. She's the chosen one. They don't like, no woman likes to find out that he might be looking at porn and other women or women don't even like the side glance to the other woman at the next table. Um, they might understand it. They might understand it, but they don't like it. It's like, you need to glance at me like that. You know what I mean? So I think that chosenness is, is as deep in women as the sexual orientation is in men. It's very strong and there's a deep need for that. I am really looking forward to hopefully one day getting married, yes. And I am looking forward um, to being yeah, physically intimate with somebody one day. Why? I feel like it is, there's a deeper connection that I could share with someone um, that I don't share in just, you know, everyday relationships. And I'm really excited one day um, to be loved in that way. Desire discrepancy is one of the main reasons that people visit sex therapists. It occurs to almost every couple. In around 80% of marriages, the female will desire sex less than the man. Now this probably comes as no shock to most blokes, but it's something that we need to be aware of if we're going to experience great sexual intimacy. The Coolidge effect is a biological phenomenon which is experienced by males where they get a renewed sexual interest when a new female that they can have sex with is introduced into their environment. Now, internet pornography and perhaps infidelity would not exist if it wasn't for this primitive reflex of men to have sex with these new females that are introduced. How the Coolidge effect comes about, and, and in particular the story that, that gave it its name, is quite interesting. President Coolidge was one day touring a farmyard and he was touring the farmyard with his wife. She was separate. She went past the, the chicken coop, the chicken yard, and she noticed a rooster that was having sex over and over again. She asked the farmhand about this, to which the reply was, yeah, that rooster can go all day. Mrs. President said, you should tell Mr. President about that. Upon hearing this story, Mr. President, he queried, is it with the same hen? The answer, of course, was no, with dozens of hens, to which he replied, you should tell Mrs. Coolidge that. Now, this story might be a little bit funny, but I want to make it really, really clear. I'm not suggesting or condoning promiscuity, and I'm not saying that we have an excuse for infidelity or adultery. However, I am saying that this primitive part of our brain is worth recognising and knowing that it can drive us in the wrong direction. You see, as human beings, we are pair bonders. We are pair bonders which helps reinforce our, our brain and our, our thoughts and our love towards the ones that we are with. Rats, for instance, when they experience intimacy and they are given new sexual partners that they can fertilise, they will have sex over and over again and in certain experiments, almost to the point of complete exhaustion and death. The good news is, as human beings, we have a rationality, a God-given rationality that allows us to choose what is morally right. It's just that this Coolidge effect is lurking somewhere in the background. And if we allow ourselves to become slaves to it, 
we can actually become more in love with the sexual release than we are with human relationships. I'd have to say, and I've, I've said this uh, to my wife, that I feel like I'm the best man I can be when she is around, mm. when I'm with her. Amen. Uh, that the fit actually works. Yep. Mm. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The movie Jerry Maguire said, you complete me. And this doesn't mean that we need a woman, but the earth needs women and God made Adam and Eve. Why? Because there's a complementarity there. There's a togetherness. There's a completeness of the picture of being male and female in God's image. I, I think what happens is men compliment women and women compliment men in such a way that we never quite understand the opposite sex. And of course, what I think is beautiful about women is is often their ability to be able to sit back, you know, to be able to, to, to rest in the situation that's going on where often we want to solve every problem rather than just sit and listen and be in the midst of it sometimes with them. And the women call us as men back to that place of what it is to be able to sit back and open our hearts, to, to dilate, to open our whole parts and say, come Lord, mm. come, come and, uh, and embrace me, come and pursue me, come and penetrate me, yes. come and penetrate me with your presence. Ultimately, we are the bride of Christ. Yes. And so women are constantly calling us back to our eternal calling. Yes. That's a great gift for us as men. Yeah. Women have such a gift, the, the feminine genius. I mean, the feminine the, the genius. pinnacle of creation. Well, thank you for joining us on this episode of Real Men. You know, as long as I live, I don't think I'm going to come to fully understand women. But it is my hope that through this episode, you might be able to take something away from perhaps the special comments, perhaps the wise men panel, perhaps from our conversations. It's my prayer that we can all put something into action that makes the relationships in our lives even better, especially those of us who are blessed to be married. Thank you for joining us. I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless. Shalom World brings to you the Catholic faith in all its different dimensions. It can be a faith to inspire you in, in your own living of your Catholic life in society. Shalom World offers you an opportunity of being rich and strengthened in your family life. We live in a culture that needs to have a Catholic presence. We live in a culture that needs to be evangelized by the presence of Catholic teaching and the inspiration to live according to our Catholic way of life. I recommend to you, you're involved to be involved in the work of Shalom World. May the Lord bless you and bless the work of Shalom World. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.